Hi guys, welcome to another bowling analysis video. So today we'll be looking at an uh, update video from uh, one of our earlier bowlers, which is uh, Chris, which will, who was featured in our channel. So Chris is actually our one-handed thumbless bowler. And uh, he posted that he has been following some of my advice that I provided to him uh, because he actually added me on WhatsApp, uh, made, made it easier for me to communicate through him. Uh, because obviously he's all the way in the States, right? And we live in different time zones. Obviously, I'm in Asia and Singapore and he's in the States. So uh, when it's daytime for him, it's nighttime for me. So just uh, messaging through WhatsApp and then uh, when I am awake, I'll just respond to him, right? And uh, he, yeah, so he can read it. So uh, the one on the left is Chris O video that he sent to me, I think on the 11th of July. And the one on the right, which I have a date here, he sent it to me recently on the 28th of July. So it's been about um, 17 days, about half a month. Uh, Chris mentioned that he did try to, uh, he did try to practice himself. And I'm gonna, he mentioned, um, so the thing he was working on, he mentioned that he was working on like driving or using the palm to drive the ball forward uh, faster. He worked on his finishing position, I think. He worked on his like, probably his knee bend, balance arm. Uh, we, we're going to see Chris's progress here. And uh, obviously, you can see that these two videos, I will sync it in time and we will play it so that it runs at a similar time. Um, for no bowlers and for viewers who are uh, curious about what software I'm using here, uh, just give a shout out to this software as well. It's called Kinovia. So you can, oops, nope. That is my personal private message. So probably I want to like drag it away. All right. Yeah, so that's Kinovia. And uh, Kinovia is actually a free software. You can go to kinovia.org, K-I-N-O-V-E-A.org. And you can download uh, the open source software. It's, uh, it's, it's freeware, right? So it's developed by, I believe, uh, coaches as well as probably sports scientists. And it's actually provided free of charge to help coaches with video analysis. So personally, there are many cool features like you can measure speed vectors and all that. Um, and then you can measure height. So it's really good for a variety of video comparisons. I'm going to use it today to sync up like the old and new videos of Chris. And we're going to try and play at the same time. And we're going to see how, uh, like whether there's any, Chris has any made any progress, right? So I'm going to try and just, so Chris mentioned that by palming the ball forward, he actually says that he has like an increase in ball speed about one mile per hour. Um, it's going to be really difficult to see on the video because I'm trying my best to sync it at, exact, at the exact same time. So first and foremost is that maybe we can, uh, we can reverse it later, go back to previous frame. Yeah, let's, let's go back to previous frame for both videos. Okay, can I use the, I can use the arrow buttons. Okay, so first and foremost, I notice here that, let me bring out my big pen. Okay, I notice that Chris has developed an interesting habit, uh, which is, I, I didn't instruct him to do this. He sort of developed in, developed this habit himself, is that beforehand, Chris, uh, his right hand was under the bowling ball, which is what typically uh, no thumb bowlers as well as one two handers we typically do. And right now, actually, Chris put his ball like his bowling hand on beside the bowling ball, and then he shared the weight of the bowling ball with his left hand. So this is something that I didn't instruct him to do, but somehow he developed this habit himself. Um, I wouldn't say it's good or bad, but most of the time, uh, most two handers would do. Uh, what we're doing is here, right? We actually have our palm underneath the ball so that to support the ball better. Um, whether Chris should stop doing this, I am quite torn on it because honestly, I'm not too, I don't think there's any negative effects of him doing this. So I'm not going to comment. I'm going to let him continue doing it, right? So I assume it's actually okay. So this technique that is you, uh, doing on the this latest video, which is to share the weight of the ball on his left hand, is commonly used for uh, one-handers with their thumb in the ball because they actually want to like um, put most of their ball weight on the left hand 
so that they can relax their right hand for like um less grip right because you don't want to actually grip the ball with too much or like too much of a gripping force because that would like delay their thumb release so it's not really an issue for two-handers and one-handed thumbless bowlers since our thumb is not in the ball so we're not too we're not afraid of over gripping it so i'm just gonna leave it as that so uh, one thing that we notice here is that Chris Tew has uh, quite a lot of spine tilt forward, like he's not really standing straight in the new video compared with the old one. So alternatively, I would actually like to see him having a straighter spine tilt, like having his uh, back straightened up more as he, as he progresses in his uh, own training. His feet positioning is okay, it's not too bad. But I uh, just feel like he should actually straighten his back because by having a straight back, right, you will actually maximize your weight transfer forward when you lean forward towards uh, the so-called second and third steps. Because Chris here actually takes four steps rather than a five-step approach. So the number of steps is a bit different for us. Uh, most of the bowlers will take five-step approach here. So I'm just going to play it now. So... He still has the same ball placement. So one thing I noticed is that Chris, I think, believe has worked on his uh, height of the ball placement. So you can see that previously he was placing his ball at shoulder height. And I mentioned that he should try and place it a little bit lower. Uh, actually, ideally, even lower than this, right? Uh, I, I sort of uh, suggested that he placed it around mid, around hip level height. So he has actually lowered his ball placement. Ball placement is commonly called push away in the West. So, you know, if you're from America, if you're from Europe, if your coaches tell you push away and your friends, bowling friends tell you push away, uh, is what I refer to as ball placement in Singapore because we try to use the word ball placement instead because we want to distance ourselves away from the word push in the start of the swing because we don't want the ball to be pushed too far away from the, from the front of the body. So here, I feel like Chris has lowered his ball placement for the start of the swing, but I feel that it can go even lower. Maybe it can go like even lower at hip level. So that's that. And then let's continue playing. So you can see, still see that, see, you, can, you can see that this is definitely Chris, right? Even though he's having a different hairstyle and as well as uh, you no know, different clothes, you can see that on both the left and right frames, his form is identical, right? This is the same dude. Uh, just a little bit of like, mm, uh, a bit of difference in the positioning of the left hand, that's all. But you can see that he still has his you no know, backswing bent, uh, back, uh, bowling elbow bent during his backswing. So I would actually prefer to have Chris straighten it, straighten the bowling elbow on the downswing. So he's, now he's still in the midst of his backswing, right? But we hope that as he progresses in his own training, once he goes into the downswing, I hope to see this bowling elbow being straightened. So you can see that he's actually in his downswing now, but he still has a bent bowling elbow. Okay, so something, some immediate improvement I can see in Chris is that in this latest video, he now has his balance arm outstretched. So his balance arm is outstretched, so it should give him better upper body balance. So because having this arm outstretched will distribute your weight more evenly, whereby in the old video, you can see that Chris has his balance arm still bent, right? So some slight changes there, which is good. So that's a change for the better. And then let's proceed forward. Okay. And so now that we go into the release, so this is the release position. Seems like it's exactly the same. Uh, seems like Chris hasn't made any, hasn't made any changes at all to his release. The only good thing is that his balance arm or the norm doling arm is now straight parallel to the floor which is a good improvement it should give him better upper body balance so you can see that both his spine tube to the right is actually exactly the same no difference there and what else so let's continue playing okay we can kind of uh look at his ball speed so everything is in sync right so let's see if his ball goes a little bit faster so I do note that he's playing like a slightly different line, like on the left frame here, on the left video here, the older video, he's playing a slightly deeper line. Like I believe he's playing like a deeper arrow. He hit like probably fourth and a half arrow, but in the 
latest video, he's actually hitting like third and a half arrow. So he's playing a slightly different line. So his ball speed might not be different, but the video on the right, the ball might reach the pins just slightly earlier based on his take, based on the fact that he's taking a more, slightly more direct line to pocket. But we do see that as we you know, play the video, and we will see that the, on the video in the right, his bowling ball will hit the pins slightly before the video on the left. Like it touches the pins here. So on this exact frame, you can see that Chris's ball, the green ball that he's using here, has already touched pin one, whereby on the left video, Chris's uh, bowling ball has not touched the bowling pin yet. So it might mean that in his old video, his ball speed just a tad bit slower, but like I mentioned, it's really hard to determine because uh, he is playing a deep, deeper line in the older video. So he takes a more, a longer path to the pocket. So that could have affected uh, the, like, the time at which the ball reaches the pins. But you can see that in the old video, Chris doesn't have his balance arm up. But in his latest video, he stays well disciplined at the foul line and has his balance arm up. So something that Chris can improve on here will be his knee bend. His knee bend seems okay. But he could probably work a little bit more on bending his knee. You can see that the amount of knee bend he has in the old and new videos are exactly the same. So yeah, there's that. And then yeah, you can see that his, he has already struck on his latest video. But in the old video, uh, Chris's ball just enters into the hit pin, right? So it could mean that his ball speed is a little bit faster. So I'm just, I'll just let the video play again. And you can see both of his videos, both of Chris's past and present self, uh, not future self, right? Past and present self in motion. So yeah, the ball on the right does hit the pocket first. Is there a difference in ball speed? It's really, really hard to tell. Like one mile per hour to me with the naked eye, honestly, I'm having trouble judging it. The camera angle is different as well. But just based on comparison in the video, it does look like the right video, the ball speed is faster by a little bit. So yeah, so that's it for the update on Chris, our uh, fellow one-handed bowler, Tumblr's one-handed bowler from America. Uh, certain improvements I would like to see Chris make further forward is that have a slightly better knee bend and be able to straighten his bowling elbow in the downswing. And so that he can drive the ball forward more with uh, a straight elbow, right? So he should actually see an increase in ball speed if he's able to straighten his bowling elbow more on the downswing, um, because it helps to give him a larger uh, a larger radius in his arm swing. So the larger radius in his arm swing, when you uh, maybe I can freeze at that particular frame and we'll illustrate. So I'll just let the video play it back to that particular frame. Let's go back to that. Okay, I'm gonna wait for it. Okay, so yeah, kind of missed it. Uh, can I reverse? Yeah, yes, I can reverse here. Right. So on the downswing. So what I'm trying to say is that like his swing, right? So his swing kind of goes from uh, here to here forward, right? And the radius of his swing is this. So the longer the radius of your swing, the more velocity you will impart to the ball. So it's part of a physics formula. If you look at the formula for angular velocity, uh, conversion of angular velocity to linear velocity, you can simply Google that. Uh, physics formula for conversion of angular to physical to linear velocity. So that means when something is spinning in a spinning motion, in a circular motion, when you release it and you want to convert the thing to uh, the velocity that moving forward, moving in a straight line. So you can actually Google for that formula. The radius of the, the, the circular motion is really important. So the longer the radius of your swing, the more linear velocity you will generate, right? The faster your ball speed. So if you can actually straighten his uh, bowling elbow on the downswing, like just straighten just like a little bit here, it will actually increase his ball speed as well. So. Yeah, so that will help. So that's something that I hope to see moving forward. So other than that, his uh, finishing position looks a lot better, be uh, basically just his balance arm. So his position is his balance arm is a lot better. Okay, so thank you Chris for sending an update video and I hope that he continues to practice and 
uh, continues to send me update videos, maybe like uh, half a month or like uh, a month later, and we'll see how far it's progress. Thanks. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.